Greetings everyone and welcome back to another video. In today's one I'm going to be taking a look at a handheld gaming console made by a company you may or may not have heard of and that company is PowKitty. Now from what I can tell from my research and from the console itself, PowKitty basically just gets really cheap handhelds, rebrands them and then sells them as their own. From what I gather anyways, I could be completely wrong about that. I haven't taken a proper look at a PowKitty device on this channel. So when I picked this up at my local flea market for only 20 bucks from a good friend of mine, I figured it was worth giving it a shot to see how well this does perform. Now also due to this being a usual rambly in-depth review, I'll leave timestamps in the description as well as the pinned comment so you can skip to wherever you need to if you want to skip past the listing which we're about to go into or if you want to skip straight to the gameplay from this unit, feel free to use those timestamps included. All right, without further ado, we are looking at the PowKitty A30 handheld game console 2.8 inch IPS HD screen, 1200 milliamp, 16 gig, built-in 5000 games, supports adding ROM children's gifts, if that's a mouthful and a half. This is currently $64.15 on AliExpress for the 32 gig in transparent red, which is the exact one I have. And you can buy it a little bit cheaper from a couple of other sellers, but it's generally around the 60 Australian dollar mark for 32 gig in red. So I'll display the usual currency conversion chart on screen so you can get a rough idea of how much this thing costs around the world, even though this isn't really accurate. It's just a very rough estimate of how much it may cost, wherever you're located around the world. And straight away, the design of this is ripping off the Game Boy Advance, except they've added two extra face buttons and two extra trigger buttons, as well as, well, revamping the whole entire thing to work with a complete set of retro games. Pocket Video Game Player, the PowKitty A30 has built-in high performance processor and a 2.8 inch IPS screen, 480 by 272 resolution, support up to 10 different platform simulators. It's got four hours of playtime, Type-C, and the 2.8 inch IPS display. However, the screen resolution isn't actually correct. They correct it later on. Games supported more than 10 emulators, Arcade, Neo Geo, Famicom, Super Famicom, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Mega Drive, Sega Master System, PC Engine, and PlayStation. However, if you look at the controllers, you will see Xbox, Switch, Wii Classic controllers, N64, and also DS. None of those are actually supported on this unit. I would have thought that you could have at least tried to push for more emulators on this thing, but whatever it has on this is what you're stuck with. Two hour fully charged, four hours playtime with a lithium polymer explosion proof high density battery, which means we are definitely in for some high quality gameplay. I've borrowed these pictures from another listing, but it's the GBA game machine with Budin 5000 plus new game. So I'm not gonna link this in the description below because this does have a bunch of games from Nintendo, Sega, and all that sort of stuff. Once again, this is port list, just saying arcade, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Neo Geo, PlayStation, PC Engine, Mega Drive, Famicom, Master System, and Super Famicom with a couple of screenshots of a few different games. It has TF support custom download. The custom download part is putting extra ROMs on this. This was actually promised to have custom firmware support. However, as of 2023, there is nothing in terms of custom firmware or anything like that on this. Pretty much the only thing you can do with this console is add a couple of extra games to the emulators that are already built on this thing, and that's it. The quick specs show the 2.8 inch IPS HD screen display, which calling a 320 by 240 display is quite a stretch, but anywho. It has Linux open source play system, but as I said, there's no customization, no homebrew, no nothing for this. It has a classic ARM processor at 620 hertz, not megahertz, just 628 hertz. 1200 milliamp hour battery, Voyage lasts more than four hours, 64 gig memory, extensible custom content, and 10 plus simulator custom download simulator, if that of course made any sense. But the real specifications are on screen, which properly shows the 628 megahertz processor, the proper screen resolution of 320 by 240, the ports being USB type C, headphone jack, which is nice to see, all the button layouts. Also there's quick save states, not save states, just a quick save state. And there's game management with favorites and game scanning. And also I'll show you the size of this unit very soon, but it's a fairly light unit coming in at 120 grams. Okay, so that's all the listings. So we get a pretty rough idea of what's going on with this console. So let's take a proper look at this thing and get to know the PowKitty A30. PowKitty A30, that doesn't have PowKitty written on it anywhere. As I said at the beginning, I have a feeling that PowKitty just takes cheap consoles and just slaps their name on them and calls it a day. But we kind of already know how cheap this console's gonna be, but we'll get to that soon. So we've got the Game Boy Advance looking appearance on the front of this nice yellow box with A30 written there. At the side, we have 2.8 inch, 320 by 240 IPS screen support type C charging function with the 1200 milliamp hour battery made in China, recycle, throw it in the bin if you want to, and zero to three sad onions. Ashen's reference, haven't heard that in a while from him. Hopefully we get to hear it again one day. On the sides of the box, we just have the button config with home and brightness being at the top. The side, the console, charging cable and USB manual are included. Other side has more of the button layout and then on the back has absolutely nothing. Opening the box up, 
we have the console, which I've got to say, the transparent red color, I really like. That's why I did buy this. But we'll have a look at that close up in a second, because inside of this, we just have the power key instructions and someone's already pinched the USB cable. I think I actually might have done that myself. I don't remember. The instructions actually have power kitty printed on them. Also announce the superior life of power kitty. So there's a, oh, there's a past thing. 8th of the 4th, 2021. Don't know what that says on there, but it's past it. So that side's all Chinese, so we can skip that. So let's go to the English side. The OS that this actually runs is called TrimUI. And from what I've gathered online, a lot of people hate TrimUI. And from the testing that I've already done with this, I can understand why people don't like TrimUI. It's a bit clunky. Also, introduce you on. Welcome to your new PowerKitty A30 console. We create carefully crafted game console product for who want to immerse themselves in games anytime, anywhere. Before using your product, we strongly encourage you to fully read through this user guide for best performance charge fully before use. Will do. So it's just basically save states, button config, how to install retro games, copy your own retro games into the SD card by the USB card reader. Safety guidelines, do not modify or repair it, do not drop it, do not expose a console to any rain or anything. Oh, and do not use any dilutant or volatile liquid to clean the product. Do not use the product in a hazardous location. This is a hazardous location. There's been several welcome devices on this desk. That's fine, we'll just pretend like these instructions don't exist and just move on. Here's the console. As I said, only comes in at 120 grams, which isn't a bad thing. The build quality of this feels a little flimsy, but altogether it's fairly solid for the most part. Like it feels cheap in the hands, but it's not gonna be sort of falling apart anytime soon. I don't think so. We have the standard D-pad, which feels extremely mushy like there is a considerable amount of travel that goes down before the button actually presses like i'll just show you sort of thing how far that has to go down to actually press i've tried playing this properly and if you go to press left you'll also press down at the same time if you go to press right you'll press up at the same time start and select button we have the face buttons of a b x y which are actually mapped out very weirdly and you cannot change any of the button layouts on this whatsoever they are stuck as they are on the top we have the l1 and l2 buttons as well as r2 and r1 home button brightness button the micro sd card that's included and the cheapness of this unit kind of shines with this whole micro sd card i'll talk about that very soon around the sides of the device looking very much like the Game Boy Advance, got the power switch, headphone jack, Type-C USB port, a little volume wheel. On the back, we can see straight through the casing, which does look quite nice. We can see the 1200 milliamp hour battery that's sticking right in there. We do have a mention of Power Kitty on this sticker on the back that says it's a retro game console, the A30, with the working and charging specifications, but that's pretty much it. And if you are actually curious of the size of this console, here is a Game Boy Advance right below it. The Game Boy Advance is actually slightly bigger. Pretty much everything is in the exact same location on the original Game Boy Advance to the Power Kitty A30, even down to like the holes for the accessories being made into the buttons for the A30. The sides all looking pretty much the same. The Advance is a lot thicker obviously. Ports wise though, headphone jack, volume wheel, and the power switch all featured on the Game Boy Advance featured on the A30. But in terms of comparisons with the GBA, that's about as far as it goes. Finally time to power this console on. So I'll go ahead and flick the power switch. And sure enough, what do we have? It's a welcome device. <laughs> And I'm pretty sure that sound is from Windows CE, possibly. Also, this is the music. It's just a loop that will just repeat over and over. There's also a little LED just next to where it says power. So that'll change depending if it's low battery, charging, all that sort of stuff. So once again with the buttons, From the sound it makes, you can probably tell just how bad they are though. But the face buttons are kind of equally as terrible. So let's just say I want to go into favorites. If I press B, it finally got there. You have to push down just as much as you do with D-pad to actually get them to work. Otherwise, if you just do a very simple press, it doesn't really work. You've got to really hammer that button push down to actually get it to work. That there is not enough. That there is enough. <laughs> the shoulder buttons do feel quite natural, quite comfy, and they do have a pretty satisfying click to them, so I'll give them a pass. When I tear this down, I wonder if I can make a modification to make this D-pad sit a little bit lower so it's closer to the buttons, giving it more of a tactile feeling instead of it being so spongy as it is. If you were to take the micro SD card out, if you happen to stuff this micro SD card up, guess what happens? Your console will do absolutely nothing. 
it will not boot because there is no internal storage on this actual motherboard. All the system files are located on this micro SD card. So you can sit here until the battery dies waiting for this thing to boot. It's not going to do anything because all the system files are on this memory card. So if you connect this to your PC and happen to accidentally delete a partition or do something like that, your whole entire console is basically useless. You would have to download the firmware from somewhere to then restore back onto this card and then hopefully it works again. You also can't connect a USB-C cable to this to transfer ROMs over. I've tried a couple of times and it just doesn't seem to work unless it's just my unit that's faulty, but I had to keep on pulling the card out, put it into my computer, watch all the partitions for this thing just pop up all over the place before I could finally get to the ROMs folder to put my own custom ROMs on. Including some internal storage would have been just a little bit more helpful than having it all on this micro SD card. Like my Aminic console review, that had two micro SD card slots, one for user data and one for the Linux OS, which was really helpful. However, that console is more expensive than this 60 Australian dollar thing. So obviously there are some corners that had to be cut, but it's just worth mentioning that if you do happen to buy this, which I will already say for its asking price, it's not worth it. I think the $20 I paid for it's about worth it. But if you do happen to buy this thing new, that's a bit of a problem knowing that this micro SD card is the most important part for this console to actually work. Probably best to make a backup of this if you do buy it, just in case anything does go wrong. Once the card's back in, you can go ahead and switch the console on and you'll see the fantastic welcome boot up. But we have the options for favorite retro game, game file setting, playlist, and that's about it. So obviously the retro games and games will come back to. But if we come to the file manager, you would think that this might be able to be used as like an MP3 player. It has a headphone jack. You've got 32 gigs of storage. It makes sense, doesn't it? Unfortunately, it does not play MP3s or any audio files whatsoever. So you cannot use this as a music player. Okay, well, maybe I could put videos on this thing. You can't can't even play videos on this. So this is strictly for games and games only. The video portion of it seems a little silly being a 320 by 240 display, but playing music on this just kind of would have made sense if they included it on this. And from what I can tell, there's no custom way to actually get them going. I had BFG Division, Costa Rica in 4K, everything like that in here, and none of it appears up. Even a JPEG image doesn't even appear, if that gives you an idea of how limited this thing is. In settings, we do have a keys map to rotate to 90 degrees, but it basically just moves these buttons to there, which makes things even more confusing while trying to play this. So just leave it as default. We got the language, background music, brightness, refresh ROMs, factory reset, device info. So with the whole key mapping, B is to actually open and A is back. So you've got to get used to that. The mode is PowerKitty A30. We do have a serial number. The version is 0.105. The CPU is at 717 megahertz. So slightly higher than what was advertised. 64 megabytes of RAM. The micro SD card being 32 gigabytes. And that's about it within here. The playlist function shows the recent games you've played. However, if I go to it, Dora the Explorer is actually here, which I don't recall opening up Dora the Explorer to test on this. So, um... That's fair. Favorites is pretty self-explanatory. You can have your favorite games displayed here. So you just come straight into this menu. Once you've made some of your games your favorites and then just come straight into here and select them. In game, you have three games that are already preloaded on this. And I tried to find ways of putting other games onto this. Like I thought Java may have worked, but that doesn't work. So I have no clue what other games you can put into this menu. If someone wants to let me know, because I've tried looking up and it just seems that these three games are the only ones that are on here. So let me quickly show you these ones. So this is, I can't even read what that says. Eurulean? Tyrian. There you go. Also, this is the absolute highest brightness it can go to. And if you do press the brightness button, and go all the way down, you're stuck. You have to press it a number of times to actually go back to being the maximum brightness. So best not to touch that button. First game is just a 2D shoot 'em up. You're in a ship, you're shooting things. And only one button actually will work. The shoulder buttons don't do anything either. This works. It seems to be fairly playable, just a fairly basic shooter and one of the many games that are included on this. So once you're done with this, just go ahead and press home and you can quit. It does actually have the doom sounds. See, doom sounds. We have sea dogs up next, which um, sea dogs, no, not sea dogs, sea dogs. You'll understand once it loads, but you can really tell the sheer performance of this console. And I will say, I actually haven't seen what this game is. I haven't tested these. So this is going to be a first for me. We're almost there. There we go. 
This is Sea Dogs. Credits to Ronnie Wester. That's me, I designed and coded this game and I did all the graphics too. Alright, well let's start. Not that you can actually see what's going on. I've had to turn the exposure up to the absolute maximum just so you can see what's going on. Pretty much this is just a game where you shoot and it doesn't run that great at all to be honest and I'm stuck down the bottom and I think I died. Nope, there we go. Even just firing makes the game lag. That's this game. Took all that time to load. Let's try the last one, which is Digger. Windmill Software 1983. That's good. Oh, okay. Well, this is Digger. It's a retro game. It runs nicely. It's 2D. It's very basic. It works. I did it. Yay. If you just heard, the sound kind of sounded like it was dying. Just ever so slightly. Doesn't sound the greatest, but it will do. Now finally coming into retro game. So we have Neo Geo, Famicom, Super Famicom, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Mega Drive, Sega Master System, PC Engine, PlayStation, Arcade, and that's basically it. Once again, you can't add any more emulators to this. I've tried Nintendo 64, Atari 2600, all that sort of stuff doesn't work on this. What is listed here is all you can play. So I'm gonna start off with Famicom first. And obviously the first game that I'm gonna to wanna to play is Super Mario Brothers. And you can use the triggers to navigate this a little bit easier, just skipping through each page instead of having to hold down to go through them all. There is Super Mario Brothers. And if we go up for a zoom on the display, you can tell that it's 320 by 240, but it's not a bad panel. The colors are fairly vibrant for what they are. And I guess for a $60 console, it's not too bad. But if you do look closely, you can count each individual pixel if you wanted to. A is to jump, B is turbo, so X is to run, so here we go. At least the emulation is kind of solid, but those buttons, the travel is just ridiculous, and the amount of force that you've got to put into the buttons to actually get them to work, but at least... What happened to the flagpole? Got some fireworks there. Just from Super Mario Brothers, it has some problems with emulation. It's definitely far from smooth, that's for sure. And also how to add one of the games to the favorites list. You just press home on any selected game and then add to favorite and that's it. I'm just gonna quickly try Contra on this thing because that's on most sort of Famiclones. Good old Contra. It just seems a little slow. The sound isn't too bad, but it does cut off in some areas. And once you finish with a game, just press home and you can do a save state, load save states and all that sort of stuff, which is good to see. Super Famicom is where things kind of get a little bit silly. So for my test, I've got Donkey Kong Country and Doom on here. Doom uses the Super FX chip, whereas Donkey Kong Country was just more of a technical marvel on the Super Nintendo. So let me start off with Donkey Kong Country, just to show you how this runs. This is the first level. And it doesn't run too bad. It does have a few frame skips here and there. And there's the lag there. It does pick up, but when there's some more graphically intensive stuff on screen, it does lag. Games are playable if you just press down on this thing a lot more harder than you would on a normal console. If you can persist with that, it's not the worst experience. It just works. And the sound emulation as well. Not quite the best, but it's alright for a cheap console. Doom on the Super Nintendo. Granted, this doesn't run fantastic as it already is, but now emulated? Yeah, there's a couple of problems with this one. This is not slowed down or anything. This is depressing doom. This is very depressing doom. And moving is it literally a frame a second. This feels quite daunting actually.
if you want to play Doom going, hey, I don't want to kill all the demons, I just want to see what's around each corner, the music fits kind of perfectly slowed down to 20%. Now I've just got to find which button actually opens the uh, door. Yeah, this is about as far as I'm going to get with Doom on the SNES. For basic 2D Super Nintendo games, you shouldn't have a problem, but anything that has any bits of 3D in it, or are slightly more graphically intensive, you're going to struggle with on this thing. So let's move on to Game Boy. And you'd think with Game Boy games and Game Boy Color games, they should run absolutely flawless on this. And well, the result is, just trying Pokemon Crystal, it actually has the overlay, which kind of looks nice, but I'll just bump the sound up. There you go. This is Pokemon Crystal on this. For the most part, it runs fairly well, but if you do get into more intense areas, you'll find that you'll see some stuttering. So like just entering buildings, you get that slight bit of lag. Finally getting into gameplay of Pokemon Crystal, let's go ahead and start a battle. And for the most part, the emulation is okay, but you will experience some lag here and there. It's not 100% super smooth, but it's definitely playable if you just want a cheap experience of playing Pokemon Crystal, Pokemon Gold, whatever. It's not too bad. It will do. But since this is a fairly easygoing game, that lag won't be too much of an issue. But let me show you something where lag may be a bit of an issue combined with the terrible buttons on this. One of my favorite games on the Game Boy is Pokemon Puzzle Challenge. This game is absolutely amazing. I played this on my actual Game Boy when I was a kid. I played the hell out of it and I still love it to this day. It requires precision controls at some points and quick thinking. So let me just go ahead and show you how that's gonna work on this console. I can't even do this because of the buttons, the travel with the D-pad is if you hold it too far, you're gonna just slide all the way to the left or slide all the way to the right. It's just all over the place. So this is definitely not suited for games where you have to be fairly fast with your controls. If it's a slower game, slower paced game, no problems, but fast paced stuff with this D-pad, it's just impossible. But for Game Boy emulation overall, it's not bad, it'll do. I kind of feel that my N-Gage, when I had that back in 2005 or 2006, when I had a Game Boy emulator on that, that ran Pokemon Crystal a lot better than this did. But let me show you Game Boy Advance. And of course, what I'm gonna show you on Game Boy Advance is Doom, which for the most part, Doom actually runs fairly well on the Game Boy Advance as it is. But let me show you on the Powerkitty A30 how it runs. This is Doom on Game Boy Advance. It actually runs fairly solid. Except for the slowdowns and the fact that sound barely works. There we go. Pretty much unplayable. I mean, if you're patient enough, it's fine, but Game Boy Advance and 3D on this, yeah, you're not gonna go too far. I tried to get to the end, I was close. So you're probably wondering how Pokemon Ruby would run on this. Well, I'll show you how that runs too. Well, I tried. I've tried a few versions of Ruby and they just don't want to load. I'll try Fire Red, just to see if that works. Oh, that works. I don't know what this says. I'll just guess. Sound emulation isn't too bad, and it's smooth in some areas, and then it sort of has a bit of a frame dip here and there. I'm just gonna call myself that character, that character, this character, and that character. Uh, done. I have no idea what I just called myself, but okie dokie. Uh, let's call our rival that name. Yes. It feels like it's running at about 70% or so. 
I mean, at some points it feels a little bit faster, but for the most part it kind of just lags behind. If you don't mind the occasional lag here and there, it's perfectly playable, but once again the buttons are just pretty tacky for the most part. That's where it's going to be the issue. Like a number of times through this review, I've been pressing, you know, B to skip or whatever, but you got to really give it, <laughs> you got to give it all to actually keep it going. And a battle in this, how does that run? The game actually looks kind of a bit blurry. Like it doesn't seem quite accurate emulation wise. There is a option to have stretch off, which makes it look a little something like this. That may be a more accurate emulation of the Game Boy Advance. And this options with many of the emulators as well. Um, probably will help with performance, but you obviously don't really want to play it like this. You want to play a full screen experience, but at least it looks a lot better now than how it does like that. There is a noticeable difference, trust me. So altogether Game Boy Advance emulation, playable in some areas. 3D stuff obviously is going to be a no-go, but for basic 2D stuff, it will be okay. You're going to experience slowdowns though. Mega Drive though. This supports 32X, Mega CD, and obviously Mega Drive. Let me show you how this performs on this console. I could have played Zero Wing for the fantastic starting cutscene, but I won't. I'll play Sonic 2. Should run at 60 FPS. We'll see about that. You know what? It's not too bad. Bit of jitteriness here and there, but... Otherwise, it's definitely playable. No, it, it runs fairly well, on par with basically the Super Nintendo. Let me show you Jurassic Park on this though. This is also a really fun game, by the way. On the Ambient console, I had some issues with the button mapping, but I can actually change weapons in this to whatever I want. I sound like a broken record, but you're obviously going to experience some frame dips here and there. I'm not too sure how the six button Genesis layout is going to be, or Mega Drive layout is going to be, but Mega Drive Genesis emulation, not too bad. Mega CD emulation, on the other hand, is a little something like this. That's about as far as we're going to get. I've tried a number of ways to try and get this working. I've tried different games, and this is as far as I get. I get 0% and it will just kick me back to the main menu very soon. Would have liked to have tried it, but it is what it is. Maybe I'm doing something wrong, but I've tried it extracted in the zip file, all that sort of stuff, and it just doesn't want to work. So let's move on to one of the most infamous games on the Sega 32X, Doom 32X. Let me uh, bump that volume all the way up too, so you get to hear the, uh, the wonderful music in this game. I appreciate this more and more each time I play it. Yep. At least it plays 32x. <laughs> it runs at about three frames a second. Doom on the Game Boy Advance on this was probably the smoothest emulation for th about three seconds before it just stopped entirely and then continued on. It doesn't look too bad. That's the best part of it, but obviously emulation wise, we're struggling. Granted, the 32X is a pretty iffy system as it is anyway, so I wouldn't expect it to run at 60 FPS on this thing. We'll just give that a pass. Moving on, we have Sega Master System. Should be basically on the same level as the Famicom. So let me boot up Sonic the Hedgehog, just to give you an idea of what it looks like. There it is though. It runs pretty much about how you would expect, to be honest. It runs at a reasonable frame rate. The Master System only being 8-bit, you shouldn't have a lot of slowdowns with this. It should just be very, very minimal. I'm trying to think of any other Master System games to demonstrate, but I think you will get a rough idea of how it would be on this. So let's move on because we have PC Engine. I will be honest, there's not a lot of PC Engine games that I actually know of. I'm just going to see if there's anything that I actually recognize. Splatterhouse. I recognize Splatterhouse. Fun game. Let's see how that runs. You know what? Reasonable. More than reasonable, actually. Perfectly fine. You just whack enemies against the wall, it's fun. But yeah, I would say this would be fine. 
I don't think you'll have any problems with PC Engine emulation. Not that I'm very familiar with the games on the PC Engine, apart from Splatterhouse that I've just seen. You probably will experience some lag here and there, as to be expected with basically any emulation on this console, but it's smooth from what I'm seeing. We have Arcade, Neo Geo, and PlayStation left. So let me just show you Neo Geo, which once again, I'm not too familiar with Neo Geo games. I'm pretty sure King of Fighters is on here somewhere. I'll show you King of Fighters. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, this seems fine. Yeah, Neo Geo emulation seems pretty good to me. Fans of the actual Neo Geo will probably be able to tell how this runs a little bit better than I am, but for me, it seems okay, it seems playable, but I don't think it's going to be at the exact, you know, Neo Geo spec, but it's fine for the most part. Now, in Arcade, I've tried to put my own games on this, but I can't seem to get them to work. Like, I tried to put Killer Instinct on here, but it has a secondary file, and I've tried both Extracted and in archive files, but they just don't seem to run. So I've chosen Alien vs Predator, only because the game I was looking for wasn't on the list. Um, I should have tried that actually, but I just tried Killer Instinct and that just didn't work, so. What did it say? So arcade emulation is a little something like this. There's a hamburger! The Predator eats hamburgers? Okay, that's reasonable, I guess. Playable? Once again, criticizing the buttons for just how far you've got to push them down to get them to work, but this isn't a bad experience. It works. Once again, frame dips here and there, but can't do much about that. Actually, for the fun of it, let me show you Zero Wing. I mean, this is a fairly basic game in itself, just to shoot them up, but it runs fairly smoothly, so all up for arcade emulation. Not bad. It'll do. And finally, we are at the last one, PlayStation, the most demanding emulator that's on this thing. The question is, how does PlayStation run on this? Now, mind you, the technical specifications for this console don't mention a 3D accelerator. It's only a 2D accelerator in this. Having 3D actually working on this at all in some capacity is kind of a feat in itself. I say that, but Doom doesn't do anything. That's okay, because I know that Pepsi Man works. And this is Pepsi Man. Yep, it's not really meant to be playing 3D stuff as per the technical specifications. But I mean, if you want to play Pepsi Man at a uh, couple of frames a second, it's here. And there's no options you can change either, it is just stuck as it is. So I do have Resident Evil 2 on here, but I want to show you Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2, because that's one game that I'm very familiar with. I used to speedrun Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2, but on this, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 doesn't exactly run the best, and you'll see very soon. I'm pretty sure I can just leave the music on because you're not really going to be able to work out what's going on. So here we go, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 on the Power Kitty A30. Wait for it. There we go. So, B is actually not to grab, X is actually to grab. To say it runs would be a little bit incorrect. It's a slideshow of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. I'll give it effort for trying. But the guy that actually sold this to me, he had Harvest Moon on here and that was the only game that he was playing on this. And that ran reasonable. Can't say the same for this though. That's every single emulator that is on this. So the verdict with the PowerKitty A30, the screen's not too bad. The build is not too bad. Speaker-wise is not too bad. It'll do, it's just a very basic speaker. Battery life also, from my testing, I honestly feel like I'd probably get about four hours out of this. But from the two hours or so that I've been filming, I've only dropped down about a 
quarter or so of the battery. So that's not too bad. The headphone jack does work. Plug in some headphones, off you go. But with the emulation being as choppy as it is, you're not going to really experience the best of the sound. The emulation is very hit and miss. Even on the most basic of things, you're going to see lag happen no matter what. Obviously, anything that's 3D, steer away from because it's just going to lag no matter what due to the specifications of this thing. You can't add emulators. You can't add any more games than what you already have. You are just stuck as it is. People have tried doing custom firmware, but unfortunately, nothing has worked. So it's just that limitation that's in place. If you're buying this just to play a couple of Super Nintendo games and some Famicom games, maybe some Neo Geo as well, okay, you're not going to have that much of a problem. But if if you're buying this to specifically put more on this and try and push more out of it, it's not going to be something for you. And especially with the whole micro SD card, if you do happen to lose this micro SD card, then you're kind of out of luck and you have to search for the firmware for this and all that sort of stuff. You can't just download a random firmware and just chuck it on. It's not going to work and there's no internal storage for the OS to have on here. Once again, I've got to reiterate that the buttons are probably the most porous aspect of this. Shoulder buttons are fine, but the D-pad and the face buttons are just ridiculous. There is just way too much travel and the amount of force that's used to get one of the buttons to work is just a little silly and the color's good i like the color that's pretty much it yeah for the asking price definitely not worth it if you find this for 20 bucks listed somewhere it's great to just have it just to play around with i suppose but as a serious emulation handout on the cheap you might want to steer away from this one the retroid pocket 2 seems to be a better option than this a lot of people have said that retroid pocket is a much better option than this thing and i can definitely say that because i do own the retroid pocket 2 and have played a few games on there even though it's running the mt6580 at least it has android and you can do some customizations add your own emulators and all that sort of good stuff this is just very locked down as it is. Not really recommend it unless you can find it super cheap. So yeah, that's my verdict on this one. So what better way to finish this video than by tearing it down and taking a look at the innards of this thing. And with just a couple of Phillips head screws holding the back cover on, I'll go ahead and take these off. We get access to the innards of this thing. Pull the back cover off and you can see right through that, looking nice. And uh, all the buttons just kind of fell off, but that's okay. There is the 1200 milliamp hour battery, which I can just Lift off like so and disconnect that. That's just a fairly standard generic battery there. Nothing to write home about. There's one screw holding the motherboard down to the front and I'll also unplug the speaker. And that's it, we're in. So there is the buttons. Look how big the travel distance is for them. They really needed to be minimized down. You could probably chop a little bit off to get a bit more of a better experience. That's why they feel so spongy. And taking a look at the board itself, the screen is just held in by this little connector so I can take that off. And there is a code there if you wanna Google that, feel free. There's probably more under this tape, but I'll just leave that tape on there. It's probably crucial for this. The motherboard itself looks a little something like this. And we see our processor being the all winner F1C200S, which is the 680 megahertz processor. As you can see, there is no internal storage. It's just a couple of power ICs, sound, all that sort of stuff, and that's basically it. The micro SD card is the most vital thing for this system. That is pretty much the whole entire guts of this thing right there. It's kind of a bit of a boring teardown, isn't it? I thought it would have been a little bit more exciting, but that's unfortunately as good as we're gonna get. All right, well, I'll put this depressing thing back together then. It's back together, I think, for the most part. It should be about factory. Yep, seems fine. But yeah, this is pretty much the welcome Power Kitty A30 handheld gaming console thing that I paid 20 bucks for from my local flea market. And I think I've said what I've needed to say about it. Honestly, that Nintendo Switch cross PS Vita hybrid thing that I looked at which I'll cut up here if you haven't seen that video. That one wasn't actually too bad because you could use it for a little bit more. Granted, the emulation wasn't the best, but at least you could play videos and play MP3s and all that sort of stuff on it. Whereas this is just games. That's as far as you can do. No options to even do any of that. Speaking of that Nintendo Switch thing, just to refresh your memories, here it is here. I think it still works. Wait, wait. Tekken, 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 King of Fires, Tekken, 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 Street Fighter, Tekken, 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 Tekken. Oh, wait, this can't even run PlayStation 1. Okay, I'll take that back. I don't know if this is better or that's better. Let me know down in the comments which one you think's better then. I have a seven inch version of this that I want to review after this one. So that'll be the next video, taking a look at the seven inch version 
of this thing to see if it's going to be any better. So stick around for that one, folks. That's going to do it for today's one. It went a lot longer than I had originally anticipated for because I just wanted this video to be as in-depth about this console. But otherwise, this $60 Power Kitty welcome device just doesn't really cut it. So I hope my in-depth review has given you a chance to wonder if this is going to be worth purchasing or not. But yeah, if you made it to the end of this video without using timestamps, thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. But if you had to use the timestamps to skip along past the listing and all that sort of stuff, then that's absolutely fine. That's why they're there. That's why I include them because I know my videos are very, very rambly, but a lot of people like the rambling and it's here to stay. I'm not going to chop it out because there's no way I would have been able to cover this device in a matter of 10 minutes. That's for sure. But anyways, for Folks, I hope you did enjoy this video for what it was. I started off 2022 with a gaming video. Now I've started off 2023 with two gaming videos. But it's welcome. People want to see welcome on the channel. It's a welcome device. Can't say much more than that. But I hope you enjoyed looking at this thing. Let me know your thoughts about Power Kitty down below because to me it just seems like generic device. Power Kitty slapped on there. We can sell it now. Be interesting to hear your thoughts. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. And I hope you got a kick out of this retro gaming console thingo. And stay tuned for the 7-inch version of that MP5 thing. You'll see that soon. But until then, everyone, please take care. Stay safe. Be good people. Thanks so much once again for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you all in the next one, which will be taking a look at that thing. But until then, please take care. And I'll see you then. Greetings, everyone. Uh, greeting, greetings, greeting, If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you all in the next video.